Good morning, sir. Good morning, Paul. I trust you slept well? Magnificently. Your usual morning eye opener, sir. Oh, thank and you. the daily trade. Mm. My beloved reporter. Where's Variety? In the bottom of the birdcage, sir. Of course. Your progeny are ready for you to see them off to school, sir? Outstanding. Ah, uh, good morning, Sky. Elise. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Daddy. No, no, children. The way I taught you, from the diaphragm, project. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Daddy. Oh, that is better. <laughs> yes, it is. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Chris. Another busy day. Yes. You look great, by the way. I believe I do. And how about me? You believe I do, too. I see the pool boys are resparkling the water, sir. Yes, the Schwarzeneggers complained. Oh. Will that be enough for today, sir? Now, 15 more reps, Paul. Yes, sir. Now. <coughs> now. <coughs> now. <coughs> now. <coughs> now. <coughs> Salvatore. <coughs> Better? <coughs> now. Bueno. Now. So we are in this beautiful lab that you guys created. And can you tell us how it came about? What was the inspiration for it? I'll give just the lead in because um, it, it was Paul's um, brainchild. And he, Paul had called me um, soon after Don had passed and said, we have to do something uh, to honor Don. And I said, yeah. I, I, Totally agree. But what are we going to do? And I think we talked about maybe putting together some sort of compilation of maybe, you know, put together a book of some sort. Or um, There were a few ideas that, that came around. But then Paul hit upon this brilliant idea um, based upon the fact that, you know, Don uh, took all these uh, new talent with him on the ride along that maybe we could some where somehow build a studio, a state-of-the-art studio where young people, uh, they don't have to be young, anybody new to voiceover would have a place to go in and experiment and we'll call it a lab and they can learn the voiceover um, industry. Right. And we'll have the best of the best teach them and everybody will follow. He had it all, it was like, it was linear, it was like all planned out and go, that's a good idea, that, that, that'll work and then Paul made it happen, and all I was was a wingman. I, I just tried uh -huh. to support him as much as I could along the way. Well, I don't know. That's true. I don't yeah. know about that. No. I'm I not buying it. I don't think it would have been made without you and, and George and everybody else that contributed. I, to me, the driving force, it wasn't enough to just honor him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't. I mean, he deserved honoring all over. We tried to get him a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and ran into a lot of political stuff that made no sense at all, and he deserved yeah. it for us, yeah. you know. <clears throat> and we were coming around an idea that I said, it's not, we need to come up with something that just doesn't honor him, but ke keeps his, his example living on. Yeah. You know, because what he set, the bar he set in terms of mentoring and generosity was so high that we needed to keep that alive. And, 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 I, and, and I realized that is the thing that will resonate with him wherever he may be, yeah. mm -hmm. that he would say, yeah, that I like. He told you, pass that it I on. Like. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that lesson was still with so, me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I talked and I ran it by Nita and I remember running it by everybody and everybody immediately went, right, mm -hmm. yeah. So just, I, in a way, yes, the idea that came to me, but in many ways, it came from him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just yeah. what he instilled in all of us. It suddenly made itself clear and, uh, you know, I talked to people, and Joe, um, who's being very humble about this, came on uh, immediately, and um, we made we drew up a list of people we wanted to personally contact, yeah. mm -hmm. and over a weekend had already raised seventy thousand dollars in one weekend. Wow! We went on to we had pledged one hundred and fifty thousand, but we went on the voiceover community raised two hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. The SAG Foundation uh, put in the rest, so what we have and where we're sitting is a half million dollar facility wow. dedicated to the development and success of voiceover artists, the likes of which has never, ever, ever existed. Ever, ever. And the only thing missing 
and we really needed to get it done is his picture in the lobby. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but you can you can feel his presence yeah. here. I mean, he would be. I, I imagine he would, he would be so yeah. thrilled. He would love. Oh, but He's isn't so it interesting thrilled. in a way that it's not yet? It's coming around. Yeah. It's because yes, it honors him, but it became a facility first and foremost yeah. with his example speaking first mm -hmm. and foremost, and now the picture is coming along. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. like the mm -hmm. place spoke louder than any picture yeah. could ever Absolutely. speak. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that's that's really you know I, and I think. You know, they can speak to this too, but to me, that's per that's where personally. You know, yeah, kinda well, kinda that's fantastic. I just want I, I want to yeah. know real quick because how how do people that come to the lab how do they benefit from it? I mean, Some people are out there; they're watching the show right now. We're talking about the Don LaFontaine Voiceover Lab. How what what can they get out of this place? You want to start it? You want me? Go ahead. I've been done. well. Uh, you know, uh, first and foremost, um, <coughs> it, it's a place to to come and uh, learn a craft, and there's no judging. Um, you can book time here in the small booth or in the big booth and work with an engineer or whatever. I mean, there's that part of it where you can just go in there and you can just practice. Yeah. But um, other than that, and what's so wonderful uh, is what I uh, alluded to before, that the best in the business um, that do all genres of voiceover are teaching here and they're donating their time and um, they come here during the day and they come at night and um, they teach what they know about voiceover and it's absolutely free and um, it, it's, it's a very rare um, kind of occurrence to have something like this. Yeah. Um, where you can, you gather together all this talent, you know, and it's yeah. kind of like, I, I, again, it goes back to, it's like a ride along with, with Don. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my part of it. So. Well, carry on. We very, very, very carefully crafted the guidelines and the spirit of this place, and we're very, we we protect it deeply. That this is a safe place. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's 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 built like a studio. It's built better than a lot of studios yeah. in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. But it is a lab. It's you're okay to you make your mistakes here. Mm -hmm. It's okay to explore here. It's okay to not be under the gun, the pressure that voiceover performers or performers of any kind are under. Yeah. You don't, this is a place where you're welcome to come in and do your thing and you can do it in a way that, you know, things that you might not be able to otherwise afford. Yeah. Now, it's open to all union actors, you know, free of charge. Yeah. And, and, and non-union actors are able to use it too, which is also a rarity. Uh, Absolutely. It's, like yeah. it's a big part of when we, yeah. we put this together, we wanted to make sure that this was mm -hmm. inclusive and not exclusive. Right. And we want everyone to be yeah. able to. And also, the SAG Foundation, is, as, uh, this has opened up their eyes as, at the voiceover community. Yes. The power of it, the yeah. interest in it, the, 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 the things that away. can happen yeah. from yes. it. Yeah. Absolutely. The yeah. response of the community to come in and support this was uh, yeah. something they had never seen well, before. Well, what can people do to help support the lab? Send oh. money. That's yeah. a good one. <laughs> That's we a good try to, to start. we're working as hard as we can to make it self-sustaining. We need the voice server to community to invest themselves in yeah. this. And then if they partake of this and they do really well, we hope that they then will come back and do for others what Don did for us and what we're trying to do for the voiceover community now and that this pay it forward thing continues to live on. That's awesome, man. You know, he said himself, no, my name's not going to outlast me by 15 years. It's, you know, after 50 years. Well, maybe maybe people will forget your name. They forget everybody's name, I suppose, to agree. But they're they're not going to forget the example he said if we do it no. right. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you know what? Done. Based on what you guys have you know. done and what you keep doing and how you keep it and him alive, his name's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think maybe yeah. more people are aware of Don today. It could the technology be. is helping you know? that. Yeah. Um, and I love it. You know, yeah. I, I like I said, I've never met Don, but I just talking to you guys and and, and and hearing the stories of how he was and what he did, and he would love this place. Mm -hmm. Oh, he would. You know, he would just like he'd be here all the time. He, would. he probably you know? would. He, he would. would. And and, and I feel as if I really just kind of know him now, you know, getting to talk with you. And so thank you for that. I really, really appreciate that. Okay, so did Don have any vocal exercises or warm-ups? How did he keep his voice healthy? Well, 
I think one of the things that he did was the first best thing he ever did for his voice was to stop smoking. Mm. So uh, that was the big thing that that kind of kept it. Yes. No yeah. smoking. Yes. Yeah, that's and he would. He put out an email about born. that. He said, mm. "Stop smoking. Sure if stop you're smoking, smoking now, stop smoking. So yeah. if you're smoking now, yeah. stop. It doesn't make your voice deeper, prettier, crunchier. Stop smoking." Mm. Uh, the next thing he did was he did take some voice lessons. I had a voice teacher that I worked with for years, and once in a while, Don would go in and have his own lesson. And Don was a boy soprano, really? so he actually loved to sing. Mm. And he knew probably more songs and lyrics from the 40s and 50s than anybody that I know. Wow. He could call up the lyric, who wrote it, who yeah. composed it. So he liked to sing, so he would go and do warm-up, and sometimes he'd warm up, but it wasn't an everyday thing, but just once in a while he'd go for what I call a tune-up mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and just kind of line his voice up. But uh, he cool. just tried to eat well. You know, <coughs> He wasn't a huge water drinker, but he did drink a lot of water and um, just, you know, lived healthy. He would tell a story. <laughs> People would ask him, oh, well, when did your voice... Did, did yeah. you have a voice? Yeah. <laughs> he was a regular six-year-old kid, and then yeah. you know, I think it was the age of nine or ten. Thirteen? He walked into his mother and said, Hi, Mom, could I go outside? His voice changed <laughs> oh at that gosh. moment in life. And he remembers very clearly That's when amazing. it changed. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Teacher thought he was messing uh, with, with her and said, you, you go to them. Principles. <laughs> so he became very popular because he could call in and be, "Hey, I'm Joey's dad." And yeah, he can't. Oh, exactly. yeah. 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 So Joey he became to really Joey popular. To school today. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> so he became nice. really popular all of a sudden. <laughs> Four foot wow. Old. Does anyone want to talk about the um, the gunslingers of Casa Grande? <laughs> oh wow! I mean, just how I mean, because that it's not like he set out to. No, he was be a, a writer. His so. partner Floyd Peterson and he were writing copy in New York. And they were waiting for a, a 10 o'clock session, and they, the riders of Casa Grande, whatever, and the announcer did not show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the engineer said, somebody's got to do this thing. I'll take a shot at it. And he did it. <laughs> and the rest is history. Yeah. And that was that. And he became that, the, that's voice the first of thing he ever did. Mm -hmm. And wow. then, yeah. That's amazing. That is crazy. Well, he started working at a little ske sketchy here and, you know, sketchy here and there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when after he, he was honored at the uh, Hollywood Theater in 2005. And I can remember, was 2005? The Key Art Awards? Yeah, the Key Art Awards. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like a lifetime achievement thing. So I thought I wanted to give him something for that. So I tracked down, believe it or not, the original one sheet from Gunfighters and Casa uh. Grande. Wow. But then a little bonus, that was uh, kind of a find in itself. Try and go and find that one. <laughs> That's one of the things you talked Somebody about. You said you wouldn't right share now. with me, right? Yeah. yeah. You share that, right? Yeah, me, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and so I, 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 but that turned out an extra little bonus because I, I found this very obscure poster that probably no one else in the country had any interest in. And I got it, had it framed. And then I got a call from the guy. Oh, it had to be about a week or two later, a call or an email. He said, I might have something else from that movie you might be interested in. And it turned out to be a publicity brochure. And inside there was Don's original copy mm. oh my as gosh. he had written it. No kidding. Wow, yeah. That's amazing. Wow. So I said, send it to me. Mm. So I've got, a, you know, Don's original copy. Oh. Mm. And I walked over and I took, gave it to him, you know, and he looked at it and he goes, okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> he just did. It was like, at this Key Art yeah. Awards, the opening was they had all 15, 20 of the, the major voiceover people. Yeah. They pulled the limo on stage, mm. but with ropes onto the stage. <laughs> that was funny. And he yeah. gets out of the limo. I mean, this is the <laughs> kind of guy that how he made yeah. fun of himself. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so, was, so that's great. But where is that limo today? <laughs> is, it, is, is it somewhere? Oh, it's I think uh, I think Obama so uses it. Obama uses it. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. It is an election year. Steve, you are so funny. So you you're fun. Don's agent for 27 years, right? Yep. Um, and knowing ten percent. Yeah, that's yeah. all I got. Ten yeah. percent. <laughs> knowing what Imagine we know about the Don now, I've heard. I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that Don called you certain names. Oh, he had nicknames yeah. Scum for you. Sucker. <laughs> scum sucker. Scum sucking scum agent. Scum sucking okay. agent. Yeah. yeah. When he would answer, is this my scum sucking agent? Yeah. <laughs> not a laugh, not a smile, my scum sucking agent. Yeah. Any other nicknames he that's had so for endearing. you? God, that's oh, I wish I could think of them. I can't. But there were others. Did he Excellent. did he keep you busy? I oh, mean yeah. 
I, it was a problem with other voice talent in their mind, not yeah, in yeah, my yeah, mind. Course. I mean, yes, it was a when he was driving around. The coordination of times was was a, it was a it was a ballet dance all day every day, and you had to work for your other talent too. Of course, but, but yeah, he kept me busy. Absolutely, absolutely. Kept a lot of other people busy too. I'm sure he did, especially you, right? <laughs> giving you, giving you slack. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. it, was, it, was good flack. it was good flack. It was different, but I get, I know. In in reference to their relationship, you know, he if he loved you, he gave you crap. It's just the way it was, and yeah. you were always giving each other. It was his way of keeping things light, and it served me well in my life too, you know. Yeah. But uh, their their relationship was remarkable. It was like a well oiled machine, it and was. watching these two guys in action. Mm -hmm. We should all be so lucky mm -hmm. to have yeah. relationships with our Good partnership. professional yeah. relationships. Yeah. I wish we had you know, some tape of that. And mm -hmm. added, oh, <laughs> just as Don was one of a kind, I think this gentleman here was yeah. one of a kind. There's Without not doubt. agents like him anymore with this kind mm -hmm. of loyalty and stick to itness and really helping to carve that career to kind of open yeah. that door. Don, they want you over here. And he sort of navigated mm -hmm. those doors opening for Don. And yeah. I don't know that anyone else could have done it except okay. if had it had not been you. Man of great integrity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there you for go, sure. man. And you know, uh, Steve represented me for a number of years, and while representing Don, and you would think that would take all of his time, but mm -hmm. he always had. You would never even know that he was representing Don LaFontaine. I always felt like I was the number one. You know, everybody yeah. who was represented by Steve mm -hmm. felt like they were they were number well, one. Well, it's like being a That's parent. You have multiple yeah. children. You know, you can't yeah. play favorites, mm -hmm. and everyone needs your time. Wow. Yeah. And you had that cool office on Sunset Boulevard back yes, in back in the day. Had a bathroom in the office. Bathroom oh, in, the, in office. the office. In you fact, were so busy you couldn't. In fact, it had a couch office. too. And I swear, yes. Sag came to look at the offices when I went into business, <laughs> yeah. and they come in and they say, "Get the couch." You never get, get the couch out of, out of there. Casting couch. <gasps> Literally, the wow. expression: the couch could not be in the office. Wow. Oh, that's so not that the you... outer office where people come. It could not be in the office. In the office itself. Not that he would ever use it. No. no. But you know the other. It also felt like a New York agency a little bit to me yeah. mm -hmm. because, well, first of all, there were, you not that you ever used it, but there was a bar in your a office. Bar. Oh, and a bar? And there was a, a, it was a, a man named dark a, wood a, bar. MJ Brock. Bar? MJ bar Brock owned, uh, owned the yeah, whole block of Sunset. Across from the uh, Led Dome, if it's still yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, Dome, right there. Right there. Okay. He, he owned the whole block. MJ Brock. It was his office. Wow. And he was quite That's a ladies' man for, for the young oh, women. Okay. And he had a bar in his uh, I don't drink. I never took anything. No, he never. Just but it was extra, there. It was there. It was cool. It was like, wow, my agent, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my agent has a bar in his yeah. office. <laughs> but the other That's thing is, who was your, your um, receptionist? The, the, the woman? Which one? Nancy. No, there were so many. But uh, there was a point when I was with you at that location where your intercom didn't work. The phone system didn't work. So it was hey! like, Dave, line three. <laughs> You'd be sitting there and be like, what? Line three. <laughs> It was it was like being in New York. It was oh, crazy. That's funny. That's funny. It's crazy. You guys are nuts. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I don't think we can't let this conversation go by without mentioning somebody who's not with us anymore, Steve Suskind, mm -hmm. who was also mm -hmm. a really really close friend uh, of Don's and been there. Yeah. And I don't know why uh, why, but the thought of drinking brought him to mind. But, uh, <laughs> This is a guy that packed a portable bar anytime you went anywhere. Literally a portable bar with all the fixings, all of the You want something? Yeah, Steve had. Go to the trunk. Oh my gosh, with olives. Yeah, and he was hysterical. In the back yeah, the two of them. The two. I had a gallbladder taken out, and the two of them come visit me in the hospital. Now, you know when you have stomach surgery, you can't laugh. And they're sitting there doing their routine from... Carnegie Hall. I mean, it was. My wife literally had to get them out of it because they were killing me. Yeah, they were. They were Just really killing great, me. Great, and it, great, you got to look up Steve Suscon because he was an on-camera yeah. actor as well as a voiceover actor. I think Don had two yeah. best friends in his life: it was Steve Suscon and Paul Pate. Great character. Hands actor. down, one of the funniest. <sighs> Man. Very he funny. was an actor as well. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and on camera, funny. We had a poker game for 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Steve and I and Ted Lange and Lauren Dreyfus and. Uh, Greg O'Neill for and Steve joined us many times and ended up being a regular later on, mm -hmm. and and we, I don't know if you're a serious poker player, you just wasn't the good <laughs> one. <way. laughs> you know, it, there was just really, you know, it's like half poker and half just being Hanging idiots. Yeah. yeah, just but some of you get Steve Suskind and Don, you get all these guys going and you throw it all in the mix, mm -hmm. and 
probably some of the single best laughs <laughs> in my life to the point of wanting to puke. It was, it was, you know, he was a very know. together guy. He had yeah. the notes on the jokes. Yeah. He only had the punchline. And he could do the whole joke just by seeing the punchline. <laughs> oh, nice. He had a series of punchlines, and he yes. just... Yeah, so a joke smith. He would really be a great a anyway. host of any event mm -hmm. because he was just so at home up yeah. there. It was great. Yeah. Just he hosted the reunions on Don's family, uh, for Don's family for years. Every time he came here, we would get Steve to be the host because he was so quick on his feet. I love so it. Funny. That's awesome. I love it. So, Nita, you wrote just an absolutely stunning book, Finding Thank My Boys. You. You've read it? Yes. Wonderful. I wept all over it. I'm trying to keep my composure right now. Um, just such a beautiful, beautiful love story and your journey. Do you want to tell us how, what made you want to write it and what was it like for you to go through that? I, I didn't want to write a book. That wasn't my intention after Johnny departed. I uh, w went to a class called Writing to Heal because I needed a creative expression. I needed something to do with my time. I was still raw from grief. It was about a year later. And I happened to this class that a friend had recommended. And we would just sort of, she would give us a prompt and we'd write. And sometimes I'd cry and she didn't know that I was widowed. And sometimes we'd laugh and, and she finally figured out that it was done. Anyway, about uh, two or three months into the program, um, I kept getting such great affirmation and from check-ins, I would send check-ins to all of you, kind of let us know how, mm -hmm. how me and the girls were coming mm -hmm. along. And people would say to me, you should share this. You can help someone else who's going through it because grief is a universal story. We all, mm -hmm. unfortunately, will have to walk that road. Mm -hmm. So out of that class, I kind of got a confidence and I thought, well, when I write it, it's different than when I speak it. So it would come out sort of like, oh, okay. And I went to the teacher and I said, I, I think I have a book in me. She said, you do. I was waiting for you to figure it out. And I said, mm. well, I don't, I, I, I'm a singer. I don't, don't know how to even begin. She said, I'll help you. Mm -hmm. And we started and we put the proposal and the whole thing. So. There was the book, it was in process, and I felt like the reason that I wanted to do this was A, to share our love story. It was a, mm -hmm. an absolutely beautiful, the best time of our lives for 22 years. It was the most wonderful, perfect, uh, if there is such a word, perfect for us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the grief journal, which was my journey <coughs> through walking to the door, and Paul was standing right beside me for a lot of that, those last nine days. Because there was a lot of, you know, what happened and people, not that I really wanted like a tell-all, mm -hmm. it was more of a share-all. And just because someone else will see themselves at the side of the bed going through what we went through and then how even after those toughest moments that you can learn to stand in your life again and it doesn't come immediately, it's a process. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to share that because I really want to hopefully uh, inspire, encourage someone else who will have to you know, say goodbye to their loved one, which is what probably one of the hardest things you have to do in your yeah. life. It's something that no one wants to do. Yeah. Um, and uh, I wanted to honor him and honor our love and our love story and uh, just to be able to help someone else. So that was why you I did. Wrote the book. It's just, I mean, you have to, everyone has to read this. It's Absolutely. just mm -hmm. stunning. Thank, you. Thank so. you so much. It's called Finding My Voice, yes. My Journey Through Grief to Grace. And it was a journey, it was a road. Mm -hmm. And you can purchase it anywhere? It's pretty much online. It's on okay. Amazon and Barnes and Noble Amazon. and ebooks. Okay. But, um, yeah. yeah, and I have some signed copies. But all of the, everyone here, their names are in the book because this is not something that you get through by yourself. And yeah. even when you're cultivating family, you cultivate friends and, and your family is enlarged by the people that your husband loves that come into your life and the people that you love. And it becomes this community. You're in a village. Right. Yeah. And then that village serves you when you're going through a tough time. I mean, these guys all showed up for me and called me and checked on me and checked on the girls and send me emails and are you okay? Do you need something? You know, just yeah. show up. Can I drive for you? Can I, you know, it's, it, you can't do it by yourself. Right. And so um, I am grateful that I was able to complete it. And for me, it was the beginning of my healing. I didn't know that when I started it, I didn't know that's what it would be. Yeah. I really didn't because I had to, and sometimes I would have to write, I would write and I could not do it. I would cry for two hours mm -hmm. and I would just have to leave it because it's pretty raw. It's very raw because yeah. the emotional, you can pull it, it's right there. It's, you never forget it. Yeah. But I wanted to share that rawness because it is what, the process was, mm -hmm. and so um, I'm. I'm really. Uh, I feel blessed that I was able to write it because it unearthed some things that maybe I would have kept locked inside. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was able to sort of give them to the world through this book, hopefully, and and thereby kind of bless it out of me. Mm -hmm. 
So um, I'm lighter for having written it, but I'm also still so in love with him. He was just like the mm -hmm. best guy ever. Mm -hmm. I never Sweet. met him, and I'm in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I can feel you. I can feel you. That's right. Mm. She just said something. <laughs> this lab, I think for us, for Joe and I are in the moment of time, I guess this is part of our healing, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. they leave such a hole. Absolutely. And you keep them alive. This is a way of keeping them alive. You Absolutely. Know? And uh, so I think what Nita's done here is, is a tremendous gift, not, not, not only to the people that read it, but I think obviously to herself too, because a loss that big is something, mm. it's really hard to kind of compute. I'm still not, I've, yeah. honest to God, I still haven't computed it. And um, I'll go over once in a while to visit Don where he's at rest, you know, and there's a little, it's really a little bench that, that she and another friend Adam put there and I'll sit there and I'll, sometimes I'll kind of spill, I'll talk to him about what's going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know he's still around because I'll hear this voice going, can you not see that I'm at rest here? <laughs> right. I am sleeping. <laughs> can you, you know, and it's just, and I smile and I go, got it. Or I'll hear something else, hey, you want some grass? Or <laughs> and, I just, and I just know the man is still there, you know? Yeah. And weird in a weird way, I feel better, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And then I go. But it's all, I think for you too, I, I know for you too, it's just never going to, mm. it's never going to be Well, we, when you got something you know? like this, and, and, and us yeah. talking about it, it you know. the, the, the passion will always be there, and the always. feelings will always be there. Yeah. Just, that's, well, and that's he the so good clearly price. has imprinted on all of you. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Which is so amazing. And, um, you know, we all get the benefit of, we didn't know him, but mm. we get the benefit of that too. And then by yeah. knowing you and getting to be with you, how would you like for him to be remembered? I would say one of the greatest voices of all time and one of the greatest men of all time. Walking in here, just sitting down in front of a microphone and learning something. He would have loved that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You now, I represented a guy named Paul Fries. I remember saying, and, uh, and, he, and he was the, the, the first actor in Hollywood mm -hmm. to make a living with his voice. He was the Pillsbury Doughboy, and, mm -hmm. and, he, and he made albums, but he was a legend in the voiceover community. And he passed away in, I don't know, it was somewhere in the 70s, I think. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, you know, in, in, in three, four, five years, or I don't know how long, how long is it going to take where they won't remember him? Mm -hmm. And I think it was five years later, the first guy that I said his name, and I, and I got a who in, re mm -hmm. in response. Mm -hmm. With well, things like this, we will never have that for Don LaFontaine. Mm -hmm. It will always be almost present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's something to behold. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Wow. Um, above all his accomplishments, and they were many, obviously, mm -hmm. to me is a, a extremely loyal friend a man that never, ever forgot his roots. He was a small town kid from Duluth that would go back and visit his family. It didn't matter how big he became, his ego never got. And his ego was never. Didn't have one. He didn't have, he just didn't have <laughs> right, one. Right. So I'd like, I'd like him to be remembered for example of what um, a man can accomplish and and what he's able to give back and, and retain of himself in the process, you know. She calls him a caretaker when he, uh, from a young age. He did go through a lot when he was young, you know, yeah. but, and he was that on so many levels, yeah. not just a personal level. So, yeah. you know, that's what I'd like him to Good guys can finish first. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> that's, that's what we're gonna imprint. You know, for as well known and as, and as big Don was in the industry and, and what what I do in promos and, and network promos and things like that. Um, he was always very humble and he never put himself up on a pedestal. And I, I do remember, the, and it ha would happen several times, when somebody would refer to him as the talent. The talent is in the room or right. the talent's here and he would be like, 
who walked in. You know? <laughs> so he, he was he was not a, not about yeah. that, right. and uh, so he he was always uh, humble, and uh, you know it was a gift, and um, he just um, we just kind of gave it to all of us. You know? That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> We're here at this beautiful SAG Foundation, Don LaFontaine voiceover lab. This place is awesome. Is there anything that you want to add about this place that people should know about? There's a quote on the wall out there. Mm -hmm. To those to whom much is given, much is required. Now, it's not exactly, it's a, it's a quote from the Bible, but it is, we put it up there with Don's name under it because if you look at it, it's not quite how it's quoted in the Bible, but yeah. it's, a, right. it's how he said it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he lived by that motto and that credo. And we can build a facility that honors him and carries on his name. But if you're not using it, then you're not helping us do that. You're not helping us set that example. So we have programs here. We have teachers that donate their time, that give them themselves some of the top in the business. You're going to find it anywhere. It's been so successful that we're talking about doing it in other cities now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's catching on. I mean, as voiceover artists just starting out or even established, you have no better opportunity ever than <clears throat> to have a facility where you can come in and freely learn and, and develop your craft without anything be required of you other than a commitment to excellence. Yeah. And, uh, and in so doing, you're honoring this man and you're following his example. So you're helping us accomplish our mission, which is to help him live on. So the more you take advantage of it, the more you participate, the more you invest in it, uh, the more it allows our investment to uh, come full circle. So we thank you if you do that because it, it, it honors us and honors him too. So mm -hmm. That's fantastic. You know. mm -hmm. yeah. Nita, what was it like to be married to the king of voiceover? <laughs> well, we had this running joke. If he did something silly, I'd say, um, that's pretty good, King Don. <laughs> or if I would burp, he would say, thank you, Miss Louisiana. So we had this running thing. Yes, because we have to say, you were Miss Louisiana. You were the grand champion of Star Search. <coughs> Loved that show. And you also have three CDs, yes? Yes. So yes. you have to check out By the way, NitaWhitaker.com. <laughs> you guys are going to freak. If I have such not a crush on sing. Nita. I can't stand Is it. there a place, seriously, where people can go and listen to your music and buy it? NitaWhitaker.com, um, yes. iTunes, CD Baby, um, all of that. And on my website, yes. NitaWhitaker.com. Thank uh, you, guys. I'm a dude, Please. and I'm a rocker. Yeah. I love her. <laughs> but your all theme song say. is Dude Looks Like a Lady. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is my theme song. We're not going to get into it. Uh, I must tell you something. Something honestly. Okay. It was my biggest fear in life yeah. of her success. Hmm. Meaning, here I was representing this man and he married this lady. If this lady took off to the moon, what would happen to him? He'd have to go with her and do her husbandly <laughs> things and maybe manage wise. And what would happen to his voiceover career? <laughs> and that's when you started using the bar in your office. <laughs> So, so basically, you, you were to, terrified. So you set out to sabotage my I sabotage your career. <laughs> I'm so great. Oh, so it's all coming out ah, now. I can't wait the for someone to call me Mr. Whitaker. Yeah. <laughs> he was so it. not ego. He was like, do it, baby, do it. No, oh, I didn't that's fantastic. I love being her cheerleader. Mm. And it's wonderful because we both, in our, in our wedding rings, it, it's engraved one voice in yeah. our mm. wedding day because we felt like, you know, his voice was his livelihood and so was mine. And then we kind of came together. And and created this one voice in our home and our, mm -hmm. in the lives of our children, and it was a blessed time. What kind of a father was Don? Oh, the best. He was so involved on every level, driving carpool. Mm -hmm. um, and I, at one point, I said, honey, you cannot take the kids to school in a limo. <laughs> they're going to have a hard time because they're going, oh, they're the rich kids. You know, that's what yeah, kids yeah. think yeah. you have yeah. in a limo. Yeah. So I said, park at the bottom of the hill, and you walk them up because it's going to mess them up. So it's, he would have to do that, and he'd run back down the hill and head off to the first session. Wow. <laughs> but initially, What you know, a life. Oh, yeah, and they loved so it. Cool. They still have the pillows from the limo, and they remember that time oh. very well. I bet, they kept man. the pillows. That's something that you just but it was, forget. it was, yeah, it was pretty cool. He was, there was nothing he wouldn't do for them. Of course, they were daughters, and yeah. they kind of owned it. You know, it. they would want to hear a bedtime story oh. from their father, but yeah. he thought of a unique way to make a bedtime story. He yeah. made a film. 
A film. Yes. Oh, that's right. That's right. A film. Well, we would do this thing with the kids every night. We would tell a, a, a story without a book. Uh -huh. So we'd turn the lights out, and they had a toddler bed here, and, and Don and I would get in the middle, and we would start telling a story, and it was always Princess Sky and Princess Lisi on the farting horse. And so he would make the farting, the farting sound, and the kids would just, well, we kind of not doing it. They said, we should record these stories because the kids had such a good time with them. Well, yeah. Don sat down at the computer, and he wrote this story called The Sandman. He said, we should do this. We should do this. I'm like, do what? We should make this a movie. This is good. Well, we Don't made think small time, Nita. Don't think small time. Yeah. Oh my it's God! A feature film. <laughs> this is no eight millimeter job. No, 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 no. Of course, we I had, had a twenty five day shoot, <laughs> and it was uh, we had Steve Susskind in it, and Paul Pay played my husband, and we had our children and our godchildren, and it was about the Sandman played by Steve Susskind, who was the befuddled guy oh, who was man. kind of um, losing his way with like he couldn't remember where he yeah. <laughs> what he was doing, and he was kind of he wanted to get yeah. out, but he couldn't get out, and, and it was just the sweetest story that. Don created, wrote, and mm. Ernie Lively, who was Blake Lively's dad, he yeah. directed it, and and we did this That's this amazing. movie, wow. and it was the That's most crazy. enchanting experience. original music, original yeah. soundtrack, everything. I everything. Just Don superb. did nothing small, mm -hmm. nothing small. Where is this playing? Where is this showing? Yes. It's in my in my living room. <laughs> 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 we need to, we need to have a, like a pay per view of that. <laughs> yeah. so we get a Hey, we'll show it at the lab. <laughs> we should. My yes. friends over. Don exactly. played the the he played Santa Claus in it, right? Oh, mm -hmm. he played oh Santa Claus in it. Yeah, but it wasn't your normal Santa Claus. It was like, <laughs> uh -oh. you'd have to drunk see it. Yeah. Yeah. Like a drunk Santa, Santa big Adam. red nose, <laughs> like a Bermuda shirt, you know, or whatever he was wearing. It was the bad Santa. It was the bad <laughs> Santa. Oh, That's what he was. Santa adjacent. He wanted to debunk you know. the idea of all the things <laughs> that scare children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted to make the Sandman not a scary guy to throw coals. He's just He was just befuddled. And yeah. the Boogeyman was going to be Ben Vereen. So when you have the Boogeyman, it makes you want to dance. Yeah. Uh, make uh, ben Vereen. Yeah, scary. the Boogeyman. I like yeah. that. Exactly. So Get down and boogie. Idea. Yeah. And, wanted, and all the, the, the things that were created to scare kids into sleep, we wanted to take that away. Because mm -hmm. that's what we want to do for our kids is to just bring love into everything and take the scare mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And so we were on the same page with that. But... He was brilliant. He and then I can sweet. say he has the, um, before he passed, he had half written, gotten about halfway through the um, the stage play of Sandman. Did you know this? Um, and no, but I probably would have been heard about it sooner. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, appearing in many oh. of these videos. <laughs> Wow. I smell Broadway. <laughs> yeah. Part of the rep company that never, never really joined our audition. <laughs> but you did have yeah. the baseball team. Yeah, I mean, we, oh we had a base now. But he was a wonderful father. Oh, my goodness wonderful gracious. And my daughter could come to me and ask for another Barbie, and I would say, absolutely not. You have 25. Mm -hmm. And she, and then I'd go and make dinner, and she'd go ask her dad, and she'd bat her eyes. And then I'd hear, honey, we'll be right back. I'm like, where are you going? Uh, just down to the Toys R Us. I said, did I just say you couldn't get Barbie? <laughs> He wasn't only a wonderful dad to his own children, he was a wonderful dad to everyone's children. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just automatically took on the role of, you know, loving parent, whatever. If And uh, I, I remember quite by surprise, uh, my stepdaughter graduated from grammar school, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I said, Don, why don't you come over? We're going to all go out and grab a bite to eat, you know, and w with her. <laughs> and we're going to all go by. He goes, all right, I'll be there. You know. Well, he didn't show. <laughs> uh -oh. But the limo showed. Clinton showed. There was flowers all over the inside of the limo. <laughs> and, he was, and, and Clinton was instructed to take uh, Bella, my stepdaughter, and as many of her friends as could be <laughs> Fitted, fit into that limo <laughs> out so for dumb. pizza. Oh my God. So you've got probably 16 kids clamoring <laughs> inside this thing. And there's flour. Oh, oh, and there were sodas set out for them and all that. Yeah. And he did all that saying he was going to show up for dinner. That's how he showed up for dinner. Mm. That's showing up. But, but that That's was, so he never did anything small. Never did anything small. He just small. did it. That's And it just, you know. What do you do with a guy like that? You just let him be. Let him be. Let him be. Let him be. You just don't yeah. talk about him. That's right. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Up into so absolutely. Much, so much love. So much love. <laughs> absolutely. And I gotta say, I am absolutely <coughs> floored mm -hmm. because to 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 sit here and think that this amazing man, Don LaFontaine, had this influence and touched so many people's hearts, and that now voiceover actors all over the world have a place like the uh, Don LaFontaine voiceover lab where you can come for free. I've checked this place out. 
We're not talking about little rinky dink mm -hmm. little state of the art. microphones. We're talking about thousand dollar microphones and preamps. We're talking state of the art that you can come in here, learn your trade, hone in on your skills, work with people that, that are pros in the business. It's unheard of. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously speaking, this is I, I'm, I'm going crazy right now. <laughs> um, and the other thing is that I have to say, I got to thank all of you because yes. Stacy and I did not have the chance to meet Don. Yeah. And because of meeting you, uh, the, the four of you, and sitting here and talking with you and hearing these stories and Nita having you share from your heart how you felt and how you fell in love with him and, and how he touched you and all of you, that I, I truly, truly feel like I know Don now. I really, really do. I, I can feel his spirit. I know what you guys are talking about now. Before it was a story, mm -hmm. now I can feel it. And I know that you guys can feel that too. Am I right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank this you. This is awesome. We'll see you next time. Every day of your life